Um, hello everybody. Uh, today we are going to talk about uh, the last in the series of four uh, images of the left system uh, that we have been discussing. So far we have covered the LAO caudal, the RAO caudal, the RAO cranial and today we will be talking about LAO cranial view. And um, before we do that I, I want to just take a pause and talk about this uh, view, LAO cranial view, few things. Uh, if you look at this picture, one here on your right, uh, there is a patient that is lying on the cath table. Uh, I want you to pay attention to this, another figure or somebody like an operator standing on the right side of the patient. Again, just to reiterate, we know in the LAO cranial view, the II, the image intensifier, will be in the LAO cranial position and the X-ray will be in the opposite, on the opposite side here in this case in the RAO caudal view. This orientation is important because I want, you, I want to take you to a point here and want to um, emphasize two things here which I have written down and put stars in it and um, something that I come up with to kind of remember that is save your shin, save your skin. So why is that save your shin and save your skin? So let's talk about the shin. So basically you have to know when you are taking an LAO cranial view, your X-ray source is in the RAO caudal position here. I'm just putting some arrows on the X-ray source. So if you are standing at the foot end of the patient manipulating the catheter and you have that C arm flying around coming in the RAO caudal position and if you are not careful or your tech is not careful he can take you out he can hit your shin left shin most probably and uh, um, trust me we all have been through this uh, once or twice in our angiographic career and it is no fun it can be really painful so that is one thing that you know a physical contact with the with the C arm just because as the C arm moves to take this LAO cranial view the X-ray source under the table swings around and has to come to the RAO caudal position exactly where you will be standing as an operator. When it happens you know sometimes you ask yourself should I be better off wearing a like a shin protector or like the, the soccer player used to have that but anyway so that is one thing save your shin so if you are asking your tech or you are moving your C arm to take that LAO cranial view just take a step back and be mindful that you know the C arm is going to be coming towards your feet so another thing is save your skin so this is not to do with the physical contact but it is equally important. What I want you to take away from this talk is the LAO cranial view is the, is, is the view where the operator gets the most radiation. Again, for obvious reason, as we said that the X-ray source will be in the RAO caudal position right here. And if you are standing just at the foot end of the patient manipulating, manipulating the catheter, the radiation coming from below the table in the RAO caudal position uh, where the X-ray source will be will will have a lot of scattered radiation that, that's going to be going towards the operator. So if you have to remember that the LAO cranial view is the one view where the operator gets the most radiation. Might not be a big problem uh, if you are doing just diagnostic angiograms but if you are an interventional cardiologist and doing interventions and if it is a long case and, and, and you have an artery that you are working on and it is best seen in a leocranial view, um, you might think about this because keeping that view and keeping that, uh, that X-ray source in the areocaudal position just below the, uh, below the bed near your feet might not be a good idea because you will be exposed to a lot of radiation. So again, Save your shin, save your skin, especially if you are doing an LAO cranial view. With that, we come on to this cine loop on the left. 
Um, it is a real angiographic view of a patient getting uh, cardiac catheterization. Again, as we have already discussed, if somebody gives you this image and asks you what kind of image it is, uh, it should take you a few seconds to recognize it. Uh, if you look at the catheter, it is coming below the diaphragm, so it's probably a femoral axis. And I want you to pay attention to the catheter. And the catheter is somewhat open, like an L. And I have drawn this in this diagram in picture two here. So you see the catheter is open, L-shaped, so it's gonna be an LAO view. And another thing is if you see that the middle of the screen uh, in picture two as well as in the cine loop, you will see that the, you see a big diaphragm um, probably coming like nine o'clock position and going to four o'clock position and covering the most part of the image. So again, as we said, if, the di if you see a diaphragm in the middle of the screen, it's probably a cranial view. So within a few seconds, you recognize the image. It's a femoral access for uh, coronary angiogram probably using a JL catheter. The catheter is open. It's probably an L, LAO view. And since you see the, the diaphragm, so it's an LAO cranial view. And exactly the same view that we will be talking about today. So with that, we come on to the picture two here. Um, I have shown the catheter in blue. I'm just gonna put some arrows here. So you see that catheter uh, it's probably a Jetkins catheter engaging the left main. The left main I have highlighted as a brown, in brown color. So the catheter, catheter is open. It's probably an LAO view. Um, and since it's coming below the diaphragm, it's a femoral axis, as we already discussed. With that, we move on to the coronary anatomy. Um, if you look at the left main here, you might be able to see a little bit of the left main, but not a whole lot. Everything in the in the proximal portion is is overlapped, is is kind of crumbled together. So you cannot look look at the bifurcation. You cannot see the ostium of the ramus, um, left circumflex or the LAD. So it's not a very good view for the ostium or the proximal portion of the coronary. As we already discussed, that the caudal views are good for the body or the ostium, not as much as the cranial views where the cranial views can open up the distal vessels, but at, at the cost of um, having a distorted or, or, or overlapped uh, arteries in the proximal segment, just exactly what we talked about in this. So right around, uh, you see the LED in red, and you see a big septal perforator going down from the LED, uh, probably going seven o'clock position. It's kind of laid out nicely. And then you see the LED kind of coming down. Again, uh, we know that cranial views, um, the arteries, the artery that is most more prominent and, and nicely laid out is your LED. So here you see this LED kind of going like six o'clock position down and, and kind of open up very nicely. Right around uh, in the middle of the LED, you see an, uh, another branch kind of coming out and going towards four o'clock position, and this is important. So what differentiates the LAO cranial view from the RAO cranial view is that it opens up the diagonal branches. So the LED might be a little foreshortened, but it kind of nicely opens up the diagonal branches. If, the, if you have a proximal diagonal branch like here, up in the beginning or the mid segment of the LED, you will be able to see any osteal lesions in the diagonal branch. So to put it together, it's this view, LAO cranial view is good for the LED, but especially if you want to look at the, at the diagonal branches, and if you want to look at the ostium of the diagonal branches, if you're concerned about any disease or stenosis in the diagonal branches of the LED. Again, the, the ramus intermedius and the left circumflex, since it's not a caudal view, it's a cranial view, the other arteries, the left circumflex and the ramus will be somewhat, you know, um, foreshortened and, and there will be a lot of overlap. But again, if you see some stenosis in the ramus or left circumflex in, a, in the caudal views, the cranial view can also help you kind of look at the stenosis, especially if it's an eccentric plaque. 
With that, we move on to the the the, uh, the mediastinal structures. Um, I'm pointing here is your diaphragm kind of coming down from nine o'clock position going to uh, probably four o'clock position here and you can see that in the cine loop on the left as well it occupies most of the of the image so it's pro and kind of gives you a clue that is a cranial view and then you see the spine uh, onto the right side of the image here and that with that I want I want to take you back to the picture one here to kind of put all the structures together as we talked about you have the x-ray source that is in the RAO caudal position I'm making small dots kind of show the radiation going up so as the radiation below the 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 table in the RAO caudal position makes it way towards the image intensifier which is in the LAO cranial position and that's how we name the the image uh, as the radiation enters the body of the patient the first thing it's going to come in contact with will, will be the diaphragm of the patient exactly what you see in the cine loop on the left you see that the di big diaphragm comes in into the image after that it will enter the heart and then on its way up it's going to meet the spine before making it towards the image intensifier so kind of giving you an orientation as the beam is coming from the audio caudal position it meets the diaphragm first so you see a big diaphragm in the view then you see the heart and then it kind of passes through the spine and then the image intensifier catches it and makes an image uh, of the cine loop so this is everything putting in perspective uh, with that we complete the series of four images um, of the left system uh, within the next talk I will kind of summarize all of them together um, if you have any question you can leave that in the comment section thanks for watching and you all have a very good day